few days ago I watched Joker and what do I have to say? It was amazing. It was interesting to see a hero or a villain make a human study movie. It made me thinking, wouldn't it be interesting to see a hero movie just like the Joker? It studied why Joker becomes a Joker without a villain or in this case a hero. I thought that was refreshing and was a piece of art that really worked. So this is just me pitching a hero movie just like the Joker. The characters that I thought would be interesting to create is Captain America. To make a hero movie without a villain, one essential factor I thought was ideology. Two characters I thought that would fit the criteria is Batman and or Captain America as both have strong ideology. Batman does not kill and Captain America is a strong believer of justice. However, I just thought that Captain America would be easier as there already exists a movie that questions Captain America's ideology. Captain America the Winter Soldier from Captain America who lived in a world that was black and white, he is faced upon a more grey area and he struggles. However, the movie unfolds by creating a definitive villain, Alexander Pierce, and Captain America chooses to fight and beat him. However, what would happen if there was no villain? If there was no person to just punch over, how would Captain America react to the modern society in that situation? So, just like the Joker movie, I will be pitching a standalone movie that has nothing to do with the MCU. Just a character study of Captain America and there will be no Hydra, no S.H.I.E.L.D., no Avengers. Captain America just wakes up in the modern society and tries to adapt and connect to the current world. So, if there is no S.H.I.E.L.D., where does he work? Let's just say for argument's sake, it's the CIA, as that's where Sharon works in the MCU. There is Peggy, but no Bucky. Having Bucky, I think, hinders Cap's righteousness. And if I was to create this movie, I would like to keep it simple. So then, let's see how this movie will play out. Act 1, the normal life of Captain America. So in this act, we establish what sort of life Captain America is having in the modern world. So first up, we have the action set piece. This will play out pretty much the same as the Winter Soldier. However, since we don't have a talk with Sam at the beginning, one of his colleagues asks him if he's watching Star Wars yet. Steve answers he's going through the list and then flies off, kicks ass and saves the day. One thing that will be different is the absence of the car shot. So there won't be another mission going on and his morality won't be questioned. Yet. After the mission we head home but the events that occur on his way home is a little different. There is a bully, so without hesitation, Cap kicks their butt and saves the kid. The kid thanks him and Cap's head to a store where he buys dinner. A lot of it. Then on his way home, he gives the dinner he bought to a bunch of homeless people. They thank him and he heads home. His home is dark and confined. It's not fancy or anything. Just a small apartment, he microwaves his dinner and eats it. Nothing great. Just like a ramen or something. He could also cook. I'm guessing he can cook because he's lost his parents at a young age. Then he turns on a computer and takes out his list and YouTube something on the list. In this scene, he does not touch type. He uses his pointing finger to type each letter and then he watches the clip. Laughs, but it's really cold. He's alone and it's dark in a room. Then maybe he reads some magazines and goes to bed. Whispers, feels like a marshmallow, cuts to black. 5am in the morning the alarm goes off, he stops it but he's already awake, does his daily routine before going to work. At work his colleague asks him to do some paperwork but he declines saying that he will interrogate the terrorist instead, paperwork just kills him. They laugh and says you owe me one. Cap heads to the interrogation room where the terrorists he defeated yesterday are and checks up on them, why they committed the terrorist attack etc. This is whereby the terrorists ask Cap to help them. They have no money, no job, no life because of the people who suppress them. The people on the above are the ones accountable and that they need Cap to stand up for people like them, the people who are in the lower side of the society. Cap becomes confused and says, but you're the bad guys. The terrorists answer, we didn't want to do this. To make change, this was the only option they had. Cap answers that he will look into the case. Cap then asks his colleague to look into anything dark into the company the terrorist attacked had. 
The colleague then accepts and Cap does the rest of his job normally. Later that night, his colleague says he needs to talk and invites him to his place. The house will be fancy and a big house. Entering the house, Cap says that you have a nice house and is surprised. His colleague laughs and says, you get paid better than me. Don't you have a better one? Cap answers that he doesn't as he spends most of his money on charity. He can't even afford a place in Brooklyn. Now then, on to the actual discussion. The colleague reveals some dirty work that this company has been doing. Stealing money, the houses. Not only this, but there were bribery. Nowhere else but the CIA and the police force. Cap is shocked and from a wide room, the shot transfers into a confined house. A juxtaposition to Cap and his colleague's lifestyle. Cap sits there for a few seconds and ponders on the thought of what is going on. Dark at night, with his heightened senses, he hears noises and realizes someone is being bullied. He heads out, find out the same kid from earlier is being bullied again, but worse. There's more people bullying him and more brutal. Cap stops the fight, but in doing so, he is confronted by a knife. This once again shocks him. What's a knife doing in a bully? They exclaim that it's to stop a hero like you. Either way, Cap stops them and they run away. He lifts the kid back up, but this time, the kid doesn't thank Cap. More so, murmurs that he's a hypocrite. He's only making things worse and you're not helping. As if punched on the face, the alarm goes off next morning. Except this time, he doesn't stop it. He cuddles inside his bed and that is the end of Act 1. From a man living in a black and white world enters a more grey area. The action he's done has made things worse, and he isn't even sure if he's fighting the right side anymore. He is faced upon a consequence that he cannot hide and something has to change. We enter Act 2. He goes to work again and digs into the info he has received from his colleague. He gets data and plans to arrest the person in charge of the company. However, his colleague refuses to help. This is because he has a family and he can't risk the family being hurt. He asks by who, whereby then Cat is caught up on his superior. His superior says to drop the case. Cat replies that these are bad deeds deeds that we have to stop. Super replies that we owe this company and it's part of the job. Cap explains that we have resources to do what is right, so we should use those resources. The superior replies, who do you think paid for them? Confused, says the government. The superiors laugh. Do you know how much these resources cost? How much it costs to pay you? The government funding isn't enough, so we have sponsors like the company to help pay. Cap answers so you can overlook the bad deeds. The superior sighs. The superior mentions the street that the homeless people are in. If one or two of those died, nobody would care. Nobody would notice. But you would, right? Captain stares in disbelief and leaves the room. He heads to Pei's place, whereby he talks about how things have changed, just like in Winter Soldier. He just doesn't know what's right anymore. Peggy tells him that you always know what's right. You just have to ask your heart. Cap moves the homeless to a different place and with the more information, barges into the company and kicks ass, arresting the head of the company. After the incident, he confronts his superior and asks what he's gonna do. He's already finished his job and there's no point killing the homeless. If you do, he'll fight a report and put you in prison as well. The news is crazy about Captain America's heroic act. However, once he returns to homeless people, he finds a new face. He identifies them as a worker of the company he brought down. The man curses Captain America for stealing his job. His wife and daughter has left him. Captain America once again faces a negative consequence because of his action. Even though things seem to be going straight, it really isn't. And then that is where we meet the midpoint of this movie. Captain America is put against false charges and is arrested. The person who put false charges was his superior. Reason is because Cap was too powerful and uncontrollable. He can't be killed but he can't hide from the law. Pressed against charges that are made up or goes by a flash. But his lawyer assures that he will be okay because he is not guilty. Cap trusts the lawyer and leaves everything up to him. But then, when the court comes, he ends up being guilty and is charged with 10 years of prison. Not knowing what to do, Cap uses his superpowers to run away from the scene. He becomes a national fugitive and is now hunted. 
He loses his house and has nowhere to go. He tries to rely on the only person he can rely, Peggy. However, when he tries to meet her, she isn't there. Cat looks around only to realize that she has died. He attends the funeral from afar and watches her being buried. Lost. He has a moment of thought. He cannot punch his way out of this one like always. Even if he does, it's never ending. To put a stop to this, he needs to prove his innocence. So, he heads to learn about law and paperwork, things he has been hesitant about. Trying to learn the new ways, he gets a source of money, hires his own lawyers who he can actually trust, and tries to find a way to become a free man. The lawyer tries to help him out, but the enemies are too powerful. There is no way he can turn the tables around unless you make the spirit take away the charges pressed. Cat realizes how we are gonna do that. The only way to do that is to either adhere to the laws of the CIA so that you can work under the CIA again or give evidence to bring down the spirit. Cap says how we're gonna do that. They don't have any evidence that would suffice. The Lord says for them make up evidence like they did to you. You have to fight fire with fire. And then Cat replies, to bring down the superior, you're asking me to get my hands dirty. That's no different than the superior. The lawyer shrugs and says, I was only giving an option, but sometimes to do justice, you have to do a bad deed. You may hurt your self-esteem, but that's how the real world works. Or you could always run away from this country. So Cat is given two choices, to submit or to get your hands dirty. Another option is to run, and that is where we enter Act 3. The resolution of this story. Cat walks us out of the street, finds good deeds and things, it's all over the place. As he does, he once again finds the bullies, but what does he do but just stay there? Just looks at the person being bullied and does nothing. After the bullies leave, he approaches the kid. The kid asks, why didn't you help him? Cap answers, well last time you said you didn't want my help. The kid tries to walk away, but Cap stops him and bends down. Look, the only person who can really protect you is you. You have to learn how to protect yourself. And then Cap teaches him some self-defense moves. Cheers him up, farewells him with a high five. And then he ponders about what he just told the kid. He asks the lawyer to adjust another court. And in this court where his charges are being reissued, he just states the truth. He has done nothing wrong. And asks the juries, the judge, the people, if you think the person you are present charging against is a guilty man, if you think that what you are doing is right, if it is a decision that you can be proud of in 10 years time, then press the charges against me. But if you think otherwise, do what is right. Do what your heart is telling you to. Ask me any questions because I have nothing to hide from. Inaudible noise. Cap is released and walks out as a free man. The crowd cheers for him Cat looks into the sky. He walks home without hiding. Doing so, he meets the bully again, but the kid is fighting back. He's not hurting them, just parrying their attacks again and again, until they get tired and walk away. Kid looks back and finds Cat. Smiles. Cat smiles back. Fade to white. The end. That is the end of the movie that I pitch as a hero movie without a villain. There is a final boss to overthrow, like the Joker, but the movie isn't revolving around beating this villain. It's about a world where grey area exists, and Cat is questioned his moral compass. He is given two choices that abides his morality, and what is the conclusion he comes up with? The final act will not consist of any fighting, as this movie is specifically about dealing with a situation you cannot punch your way through. Obviously, even after the movie ends, there are still evil out there, and there are still bad deeds. You can't just punch over these, but... Through this movie, Cat will establish a miracle that he is stern with. Even if he's asked to play dirty or forfeit against injustice, Cap will not, because that's what Cap is. And that is the end of the video. What did you think of this movie I pitched? Was it interesting? Was it out of character? Please tell me your thoughts down below. Hit the likes button and subscribe, and hopefully, we'll see you next time.